In our today's class, we are going to cover a very important topic from political science one paper and that is the topic of sovereignty. As we all know that sovereignty is the most important element which differentiate the state and the other institutions. As we all know that uh, total four elements are necessary for an institution to become state and those four elements are first is population, second is territory, third is government and the fourth that is the most crucial element and that is called sovereign. This is the element which makes difference between the state and other social and political institutions. So in our today's class, we will be dealing with this particular concept only, that is the concept of sovereignty. And throughout our discussion, we will try to cover certain areas uh, with which we will try to explain the aspects, different aspects of sovereignty as a whole. So what are the areas to be covered in our today's class? Let us give you a overall idea of that. First of all, we will be dealing with meaning and definitions of sovereignty. Meaning and definition of sovereignty. Then in the second part, we will be discussing about the development of the concept. development of the concept of sovereignty. Then we will be focusing on certain aspects that means different aspects of sovereignty. Aspects of sovereignty. In the next part, we will be dealing with salient features or characteristics of sovereignty. And finally, we will try to draw a conclusion on the basis of our overall discussion of the said topic, that is the sovereignty. This will be our concluding part of the today's session. So these are the points we have to cover throughout our discussion. Let us start from the very beginning. So let us start with the meaning of sovereignty. What is the meaning of sovereignty? The meaning of sovereignty, if we really want to know the meaning of sovereignty, then we have to find out the root of this particular word. And the word sovereignty actually came from and it is derived from a Latin word which is called supranus. The Latin word supranus, which means supreme. So, in a nutshell, the actual or literal meaning of sovereignty is the supreme power of a state. So, now the thing is that Jean Odin was the first ever political thinker. The actual pronunciation of this name will be Jean Oda. He was a French philosopher and political thinker. Jean Odin, Jean Oda was the first ever political thinker who actually systematized the concept of sovereignty in his book The Republic which was published in the year of 1576. Let us start with the meaning of the concept. That is meaning of sovereignty. The word sovereignty actually is derived from a Latin word and that word is supranus. The meaning of this word is supreme. So, the literal meaning of sovereignty is the supreme power of state. Jean Bouda was, the, was a very eminent French philosopher and political thinker. He was the first who actually systematized the concept of sovereign by saying that the sovereign power of a state simply makes the perpetual or the ultimate power of a state which is basically unrestrained by any kind of law. That simply means sovereignty simply denotes such kind of power which cannot be restrained by any kind of law and in this particular sector, state is absolutely free to do anything. 
that is the ultimate or the supreme power of the state. However, we have to focus on certain other aspects as well. After Jim uh, that some other definitions, some other political thinkers are also mentionable who quite efficiently, you know, describe the concept of sovereignty. And Willoughby was one of them. According to Willoughby, sovereignty is nothing but the supreme will of the state. On the other hand, another political thinker, Victor Hugo Grotius, he mentioned that sovereignty is the supreme political power vested in him whose acts are not subject to any other and whose will cannot be overridden. That means, if we look towards these three advocates, first is Chambuda, then Willoughby and Victor Hugo Gradius. All these three thinkers, they have opined for the concept of sovereignty, they have defined sovereignty from their own perspective, but the, in a nutshell, if you want to search the meaning of sovereignty, each one of these advocates, they have opined for the supreme power of the state. That means, as Gregorius said, that state, state's power, the ultimate power of the state, is like which cannot be overridden by any other authority or any other entity. So, from this, it is very much clear that sovereignty actually mentions about, sovereignty actually denotes the idea of the supreme power of state. However, such kind of concept of sovereignty was developed, or had, we should say it has been developed since a long time. If we look towards the ancient period, that means the time period of Plato, Aristotle, or the ancient Roman Empire, during that particular time as well, the concept of sovereignty was there, but not in a systematized way. The ultimate power of the state should be there. Such kind of narrative was there as well. Jambuda, as we found uh, in the previous course of our discussion, the Jambuda was the first ever political thinker who systematized the concept of sovereignty. But after that, we have found that certain other political thinkers also come in the domain, and out of them, Hobbes is also important. Now let us find out what was Hobbes' point of view regarding the concept of sovereignty. Thomas Hobbes was of the most important social contextualist as we all know and in his book The Leviathan, he mentioned about the social contract, he mentioned about the state of nature where he focused on a type of administrative system or a type of state which is basically in nature like a Leviathan who will pose the ultimate power and who is unresistible at all. No subjects, no individual can resist the state or the will of the state. So the thing is that, like Hobbes, another thinker is important here and he is Jeremy Bentham. Jeremy Bentham, during the 18th century, he also gave his views on sovereignty. According to Bentham, that again, Bentham was focusing on the supreme or the ultimate power of the state. But the thing is that, a certain twist was there. And what was that twist? The twist is, that even if the state is posing the ultimate power, the state or the authority holder will always focus in to attain the utilitarian principle. Utilitarian principle. And this utilitarian principle basically focuses on the happiness of the individual. That simply means what Bentham actually tried to mention that even if the state, will, the state is posing its ultimate power, even if the state is having the absolute power, but during taking any kind of decision or introducing during introducing of any new legislation, the state should focus on the individual happiness as well because. According to Jeremy Bentham, the individual are the individuals are the integral part of the entire uh, statecraft, entire society as well. Okay, so this is how the concept of uh, sovereignty was developed from time to time. Let us come back to our next part. Next part will be the main characteristics 
or the salient features of the concept of sovereignty. What are the salient features? That is the characteristics of sovereignty. First of all, this is absolute in nature. What does this mean? As I said, that the first ever characteristics of sovereignty is this is absolute in nature. That means the sovereign power of the state is ultimate. This is unlimited. No other authority can persist in the society except the state. And the authority of the state is the highest one. The second thing is, this is universal as well. Universality means the state can exercise its authority over any other entity in the society and this will be permitted by law. That means be it be any individual, be it be any group or any kind of associations. Over all these entities, the state is entitled to exercise its power. This is what called universal. Next characteristic is the sovereign. Sovereignty is always permanent. That means the concept of permanence will always be associated with the concept of sovereignty. That, what does this mean actually? It actually tried to say that in every state there must be some authority holder be it be the king or in any other form. So the thing is that when any authority holder or any individual or a group of individual is exercising the power or holding the state authority with the dissolution of the government or with the overthrow of that particular government the sovereignty cannot be eradicated. But what is the reason behind this? The reason behind this is that the concept of sovereignty is associated only with the state but not with any individual. And that simply means there is a proverb in Great Britain. That is, the proverb is like that. Which is which called the king is dead. The king is dead. Long live the king. What does this mean actually? That simply means that the king is dead. That means even if the authority holder is dead, that doesn't mean that sovereignty is destroyed. Why? Sovereignty is, dis sovereignty is associated with the concept of that particular authority, that particular position, not with that individual. That is why it is said that the sovereignty is always permanent. Next comes indivisibility. in divisibility. Indivisibility simply means for that this power, sovereignty is such kind of power which cannot be divided with any other authority by the state. State is the, state is the sole entity who can enjoy this sovereign power. But the thing is that, what Skedo say that if sovereignty is divided, that simply means the sovereignty is destroyed. That means it cannot be divided. If anyone wants to divide the sovereignty, this is not possible at all. According to Gatel, when the whenever the sovereignty is divided, it is destroyed. But the thing is that another debate comes here. And what is the debate? The debate is regarding the federal government. In any set of federal government, in any federal country, take the example of the United States of America and to some extent India as well, here the powers are distributed among two sets of government. At provincial level, there are the state governments and on the other hand, at the union level, the union government is there. And it is said that both the governments can ensure their power at their own sphere. But this is not the division of sovereign power. This is just the division of power. But the thing is that 
Union government will always enjoy the sole power to take any kind of decision when the matter of national interest comes. And this is why the sovereign power is only, on, you know, only associated with the union government only. So there should not be any kind of controversy regarding this. Next comes inalienability. The next feature that is inalienability. Inalienability simply means for as long as the state will persist, the sovereign power of the state cannot be alienated from here. Okay, so these are the basic and most important characteristics of sovereignty. We have to keep in mind always. Next aspect is, you know, or next part is different aspects of sovereignty. Different aspects of sovereignty. And what are the different aspects of sovereignty? Here we will find two sets of sovereignty and those are first is again there are two sets of sovereignty first is internal sovereignty and second is external sovereignty. Okay. The main advocate or the concept of internal sovereignty was developed by Boda. On the other hand, the concept of external sovereignty was developed by Hugo Grotius. The concept of internal sovereignty is related. What does this mean actually? The internal sovereignty actually means for the control over the society of the state which comes under its territory. That means starting from introducing new laws, starting from looking after the social, political and other related matters, that means all the domestic and internal matters that comes under the internal sovereignty. If these kind of matters are handled by the state independently or freely, that is called for internal sovereignty. On the other hand, external sovereignty means for when the state is free to determine its foreign policies. When the state is totally free to determine and to, you know, finalize that who will be its ally states and who will be the INS states. So these are the basic difference between internal sovereignty and external sovereignty. If any state is posing both these sets of sovereignties or sovereign power in an efficient manner, then only it will be considered as, a, as an effective state, we can say. Okay. Another thing, uh, after this, uh, we will have to explain about some other aspects and those are, there are two sets of sovereignty. First is, each your sovereignty and second is, de facto sovereignty. Teacher sovereignty is that set of sovereignty who has the legal authority to run the state or to enjoy the state power. Teacher sovereignty simply means the legal sovereign. That means this is you know totally opposite to de facto sovereignty. De facto sovereign is the main source of this sovereign power is force and this is illegal as well. So the fundamental difference between de jure sovereignty and de facto sovereignty is what? The de jure sovereignty is the legal authority which can enjoy lawfully the sovereign power of the state. On the other hand, de facto sovereignty can come into force by overthrowing a de jure sovereignty. Okay. The next part. In the final part, we will be dealing with the concluding remarks and that is about the challenges to the concept of sovereign power. The thing is that in the concluding remark, we will be focusing on certain threats to sovereignty. So what are the challenges that we have to focus on? The first challenge is the rise of internationalism
What does this mean? If you look towards today's world politics, then you will find that a concept of global village has come up. Where, you know, the global citizenship, the concept of global citizenship and globalization is growing up day by day. And with the rise of such kind of internationalism, we have found certain in international organizations has also come up. We can take examples of United Nations organizations, World Trade Organizations, and some other international organizations at the regional level, like NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and organizations of African Union, etc. etc. So, when any state is becoming member state of any of the international organizations, they are basically dealing with and they are basically forced to accept the terms and conditions of these international organizations as a member state, which is basically set by the, you know, the larger power of global politics. So, this is how the smaller states or you can say the developing states are coming under the conditions of those so-called powerful states or the power blocks. The next threat is the, in the domestic level, the domestic issues. In every state, if you look, then there are certain domestic issues in every country, like it may be the minority discontent, minority discontent, then issues of terrorism, such kind of issues are always affecting the concept of sovereign because these are the incidents, these are the instances where state is always again and again trying to exercise its sovereign power but it is failed again and again. But even though there are certain challenges which are actually putting some hindrances or obstacles in exercising the sovereign power of the state but we should not forget about the importance of sovereign because only with the sovereign power the state can maintain an order and order society. The sovereignty in the during my initial stage of this lecture, I already mentioned that sovereignty is that particular element which make differentiation between the state and the other institutions. So we should not forget the importance, we should not forget the gravity of this concept and how much it is important for a state. So this is how we are ending here our today's class. There is some other aspects of sovereignty as well, that is the theoretical aspects and we are not covering that particular segment in our today's class. In our next class we will be dealing with the theories of sovereignty as well. Thank you everyone, happy learning throughout.